I do this with? Oops. <laughs> yes, I can use my flamethrower to harvest Moonglow. <laughs> Hello there, people. So today I'm doing my third tips and tricks video for Terraria, which is all about gardening. Now, gardening, uh, we're most interested in herbs for making potions, but there are other purposes as well. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff you need to know to get started. Well, not a bunch of stuff, a little bit of stuff. And uh, then we'll talk about the herbs and some other stuff that you can farm. So first of all, you need to know a little bit about grasses if you're going to farm in the soil. Um, so there's different types of grasses, corrupt grass, crimson grass, hallowed, and regular grass. They can all be placed in dirt or planted in dirt above zero elevation, also known as sea level. Um, now jungle grass and mushroom grass can be planted in mud at any elevation, including underground, but they, those grow more slowly. The uh, surface grasses grow fairly quickly. They'll grow to cover any grass-free areas, and if the area is continuous and large enough, they will actually create a biome so you can create a obviously a mushroom biome above the surface like up here <laughs> and that's uh, by the way one way to farm some glowing mushrooms but um, what you can do as far as the jungle grass and mushroom grass that grow a little more slowly or if you're just in a big hurry you can plant multiple seeds spread out over an area to cover it more quickly which is what I did when I was creating my surface mushroom biome I just spread planted seeds a little here and there and it spread a little faster now trees, uh, trees can grow from acorns and they grow in the various grasses that are on the dirt. Um, so we've got regular trees here. If you're in a corrupt area, you have a different type of tree and so on. Uh, so then jungle grass will grow on mud. Um, so you've got the various grasses that grow in dirt. You've got the jungle grass on mud and trees will also grow in snow and sand. You'll get the uh, boreal trees in snow and you will get the palm trees if they're in sand, uh, like by the ocean. Uh, so you can plant or locate a specific type of grass in order to grow or harvest a specific type of tree if need be. Um, you cannot, however, plant these giant glowing mushroom trees. They will grow naturally if you have an above ground mushroom biome. Those will not grow underground. Now trees, of course, need a certain amount of space above them as well uh, in order for them to grow. Now, um, moving right along, so another thing that's very useful to know about is your dryad. You can plant things and grow things without your dryad, but uh, this little green lady over here, she's the dryad, um, and she will sell you useful things. You can grow basic things without her, but she will sell you uh, seeds, planter boxes, powders, sunflowers, acorns, and so on, both for gardening and for modifying biomes. She will help you actually, uh, you know, purify or corrupt, for that matter, a biome if you want to uh, create a special little area. And you can just, you know, lay out some blocks and put a particular type of grass on them. And, uh, you know, if you've done that all correctly, then that will potentially actually become a biome. It has to be a certain size to become a biome, and of course biomes come with their own enemies and so on. Um, the Dryad will move in if you have an empty house, and if, if you've defeated any of the first four bosses, the Eye of Cthulhu, Eater of Words, Worlds, Brain of Cthulhu, or Skeletron. Um, and as I say, she will sell you things like these nifty little planter boxes. So up until now, this was my basic little garden. I'm going to show you what I've done um, and what I'm about to do. So yeah, I just bought four little planter boxes because I most frequently need day blooms and I planted those in them and that's one way of doing it. Um, you'll notice I can stand on them or just below them because planter boxes happen to count as platforms in terms of the way your movement is. So you can actually use planter boxes as platforms and grow stuff on them as well. By the way, planter boxes, however, are only available since the 1.3 update on PC. Um, that is probably coming soon to console and mobile, I hear. Um, you can also, however, make clay pots, which is another option. Um, but there's also good old farming in the dirt. So there's advantages and disadvantages to each one. I've gone ahead and laid out some dirt here. I'm going to start with um, putting some jungle grass in the mud area that I've created. And then I'm going to uh, actually, you know what, let's I want this to be fairly fast because I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm going to do that. Um, and yeah, I think I'm going to put that there and I'm going to put my regular grass, uh, which you can actually only buy from the dryad. I should have put that in the middle, but anyway, you can. Uh, I'll, I'll show you another way of doing it. Uh, you can buy grass seeds from the dryad or you can connect some dirt to some ground that already has grass or you can... Uh, there's another way, which I'll tell you in a second. So uh, that's one way to get started there. You've noticed I've just 
got different types of uh, terrain. I've got some sand at the bottom. Obviously, sand falls, so I put it at the bottom. <laughs> I've got some mud. I've got some dirt, which I'm not planting with grass. And then I've got some ash. And then I've got some uh, dirt as well, which I have just planted with grass. So herbs, they grow in the soil uh, in the normal biome or environment where they would normally grow. You can also plant them in a clay plot, pot or a planter box. Um, when you harvest them, they will drop one to three seeds when they are blooming, uh, but fully grown plants can be harvested at any time once they're grown. Uh, a clay pot, you can make those early on in the game, of course, with six clay blocks at your furnace. Uh, planter boxes, on the other hand, again, on PC only for now, are purchased from the Dryad for one silver. Uh, clay pots must be set on a support, a platform, the ground, whatever, uh, whereas planter boxes, as I say, act as platforms. Soil, however, is faster to harvest. So um, if you want a you know, little garden that you can get through quickly, that you can move through quickly, then you might use planter boxes. And just for the sake of convenience, you might use those because, see, if I use dirt, I can't jump through it. Uh, if these were planter boxes, I could. Um, however, the advantage to soil is that you can harvest it faster because harvesting works a little differently. If you have a clay pot or a planter box, you have to use your pickaxe, uh, actually, or certain other um, tools to harvest it. Whereas if it's growing on just soil, on grass, you can just run around swinging your sword and you can even sort of automate it with dart traps and stuff. You can fire a dart that goes right across the ground and... Uh, that will automatically, you know, detach all the plants and then you can just run along and grab them. So um, those are kind of the advantages and disadvantages quickly. Uh, so another thing to note with the planter boxes, although there are different types or names of planter boxes, any herb can grow in any one of them. So over here, I, I bought some daybloom planter boxes and I happen to plant daybloom's in them. However, I could plant any herb in those and it would work just as well. <laughs> so um, yeah, there are different planter boxes available from the Dryad after defeating certain bosses as you progress through the game, but it's just cosmetic. Don't worry about it unless you want a certain look. So uh, as for the different herbs, Blinkroot grows on mud, or sorry, Blinkroot grows on dirt, which does not have grass. So I've got some Blinkroot seeds and I'm going to plant those right here. And there we go. That's all seeded with blink root now. Um, Daybloom, on the other hand, grows on regular grass. <laughs> um, so blink root, blink root will bloom at any time. Daybloom, as the name might suggest, will only bloom during the day. And uh, this is what I'm going to get to, the staff of regrowth. This will allow you to spread grass and things faster. I'll get to, to the details of that in a moment, but for now, let's plant some daybloom seeds in our nice fresh grass. So there we go. That's going to be my daybloom farm now. And you don't need a big farm necessarily. It's only if you're going to be making like a heck of a lot of potions, <laughs> then you might need a bigger farm than this. Um, but there you go. Uh, then moon glow grows on jungle grass and blooms at night. Again, as the name might suggest, moon glow blooms at night. So uh, yeah, we're gonna need to finish populating this. Oh, you know what? Do I need, yeah, whatever. I've got some more seeds. <laughs> so let's just go with that. Um, yeah, I think you can use that. I'm gonna get to the staff of regrowth more fully in a second. Uh, but there we go. Jungle grass is there, and now it's planted with Moonglow. Um, Shiver, Shiverthorn grows on snow and ice and blooms after some time. It just takes a while to bloom, that's all. Um, so again, like these things, you will find these plants, these herbs, out in the environment when you're wandering around. You can harvest them, you'll get some seeds, and then you can plant them like this. They, you will find them. You, that might be all you need. But uh, if you want to have a garden and plant some, then, you know, this is how to do it as well. You can take those seeds, put them in specific grass or dirt or whatever, and uh, they'll grow as long as it's in the right place. Now, water leaf uh, grows on sand or pearl sand. That's why I've laid out some sand here. Now, there is a difference here. If you're on console or mobile, you actually need to submerge the water leaf for it to bloom. Um, since the 1.3 update on PC, that is no longer the case. 
Uh, however, that also affects uh, how it blooms. So on PC now, since the 1.3 update, it blooms when it's raining. Uh, on console and mobile, it blooms when it's submerged in water, as I say. So that's important to know. Also, um, yeah, so that grows in sand. And I've laid out some ash here, which is for fire blossom. Uh, so again, there's a difference here as well. On console and mobile, you'll still need to actually submerge the fire blossom um, once you've seeded it in lava. It will only bloom in lava. Um, whereas, again, since the 1.3 update on PC, it will actually bloom at the uh, at dusk, basically at sunset, between 3:45 and 7:30 p.m. Good to have your watch uh, or derivatives so that you can tell the time. So you can see things are starting to pop up here. It's still daytime, so I've got a day bloom. Um, I've got a blink root that, well, a couple of those now, and so on. Um, yeah, I think that's a moon glow that's sprouting, but it won't come out until nighttime. Another thing uh, that is useful to know is that once these things have bloomed, once they've come up, you, even if you don't harvest them right away, like again, day bloom only blooms during the day, it's only there during the day. Once it's come up, if the night comes and it goes away, when day comes again, it'll be there again. So uh, don't worry about necessarily harvesting it right away. And there you go, as I was saying, it's late in the day, my fire blossom is now blooming. So. Perfect illustration. <laughs> it's uh, just before it becomes night. That's when your fire blossom is going to come out. Um, my moon glow will come out as soon as night comes. The day bloom will, you know, go away for the night, but then it'll be there again in the morning. So you don't necessarily have to harvest them right away, but uh, as long as they have bloomed, they will be there the next whatever the appropriate time is. Um, and there you go. So those are the basic herbs that you're going to need to worry about. Now, the staff of regrowth that I was telling you about will allow you to collect seeds from fully grown plants, e even uh, when, you know, they're not actually blooming. So I should be able to, yeah, well, that, that actually did blow, bloom. So I got the, uh, the seeds and the actual fire bloom. Um, but yeah, you'll get extra seeds as well, which is useful. <laughs> and other things that it will do... Uh, it harvests additional herbs and can grow moss on stone based on if you're in proximity to certain types of moss when you're in the stone layer underground. Um, if you're near a moss, you can spread that moss using the staff of regrowth. If you're not near one, then uh, instead you can basically hit it um, on a stone block and it will create a random type of moss. You can hit that with your pickaxe and put another one in and just keep randomly doing it if there's a certain type of moss you want. Moss isn't that useful, but uh, just so you know. Um, the only really cool one actually is the uh, the moss that you get down near hell that glows in the dark. So you can actually use the staff of regrowth to spread that up towards the surface and you know build a glowing chasm sort of thing. Um, and the staff of regrowth, uh, again, this is also an alternative to buying grass seeds from the dryad. If I use uh, the staff of regrowth on blank dirt, like if I use it where those blank roots are, it will automatically plant regular grass on regular dirt. Important to know as well. It is found in jungle shrines or from when you're fishing in the jungle if you get jungle crates. Uh, and that's how you get your staff of regrowth. Now mushrooms. Um, so there's the herbs. Those are the, the main things you're going to need for a lot of your potions. But mushrooms are another matter. Glowing mushrooms, as I say, will grow at any elevation. So I put my surface mushroom biome up here, which I did by going to an underground mushroom biome, which I found, getting the uh, mushroom grass seeds. Again, you plant the mushroom grass seeds in mud, and it will spread on its own, and all this stuff will grow on its own. And glowing mushrooms are very plentiful, so... Um, that's an easy thing to farm. This basically is my farm at this point. I can chop down these giant um, mushroom trees, so to speak, and um, I'll get lots and lots of glowing mushrooms. And they're very useful, too. Uh, that's the ingredient for my shroomite armor. It's an ingredient for regular health potions and so on. So those are an easy one to farm. Most of the other mushrooms are more difficult to farm. So your regular mushrooms um, and your, your various other mushrooms, I'll get to that. Um, your regular mushrooms will just grow in regular grass if you don't plant something else in there. 
uh, but at random, so you're not always going to get them. Basically, you can arrange your farm in a certain way that it's more likely that you're going to get them. And if you clear the weeds, it uh, you know reasonably frequently, they're also more likely to grow. So uh, that's sort of the advice for regular mushrooms. They will only grow above zero ele elevation on regular grass. Um, so it's a little more complicated. I'm going to link to the wiki on, uh, you know, the gardening guide on the wiki for details on how you can set up a particular mushroom farm and so on and, and for other things that I'm not covering here. There's also um, vile mushrooms, which will grow only if you have corruption on the corrupt grass. There's vicious mushrooms, which will grow only on crimson grass if you have the crimson. Uh, and then there's also some uh, dye mushrooms, the teal mushrooms, which are only underground, and green mushrooms, which are only in the cavern layer. Again, those appear randomly. It's very difficult to farm them. You sort of can, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, those two are used for dyes. Other dye plants like, well, likewise will randomly occur in various biomes and environments. So if you're into dyes, you know, it's going to be kind of tough to uh, get everything you want there. Now, as I was saying, I've got my moon glow now. And uh, so that comes out at night because it's moon glow. <laughs> and if it starts raining, I'll start getting some water leaf there. Um, there's a couple other herbs that I mentioned earlier that you can grow as well. I'm just not bothering with those right now. So uh, other things that grow. Uh, cactus. Cactus grow naturally on sand blocks in the desert biome. However, they cannot be planted or transported, unfortunately. So cactus, you can't farm that, unfortunately. But um, you can cut it down, and it's useful for a variety of things, including a few potions. Um, sunflowers. Of course, when you start in the game, you'll usually have some sunflowers. So here we are. I've got some sunflowers over here. Uh, these do not have seeds, so you cannot cut this down and, you know, well, you can't make potions out of sunflowers anyway. But um, what you can do is you can take this sunflower out. And you can collect that. Of course, now my, uh, there we go. I have too much stuff in my inventory, but I can go ahead and replant that. Um, actually, only when the grass is there, by the way. <laughs> so you can, you can actually take the sunflowers out and move them, replant them somewhere else. And also having sunflowers does give you a low chance that they will spawn some up additional sunflowers in the area where you put them but they're not really planted or seeded per se you can basically just move them and if you move it somewhere if you're lucky maybe you'll get a couple more <laughs> so they can only be placed on regular or hallowed grass with no background walls so i can't uh, plant that down here in this uh, house or something it can't have background walls you can however put background walls in afterwards um so sunflowers, what are they good for? Well, they spread, they prevent the spread of the corruption or crimson into the blocks that they're standing on. So it's, you know, before hard mode particularly, like if the corruption was spreading towards here through the grass, these sunflowers would stop it right there. And that's what sunflowers are for. Um, so yeah, that's a, a basic intro to gardening. And uh, your garden can be as simple as, you know, some clay pots or planters like this, or it can be... Uh, you know, somewhere in the middle, like what I've done here, which is a very basic little soil garden. Um, or it can be, you know, a giant thing. Hey, can I, can I do this with, oops. <laughs> yes, I can use my flamethrower to harvest moon glow. <laughs> that might not be advisable, but <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the advantage of doing it in the soil is that you can harvest it quickly. And that's a little demonstration. So I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, so you, you can build, you know, a giant garden that takes up the screen or more than the screen. You can decorate it however you like. But that's all you really need to do. Uh, so I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.